Alloy of a paste, it's not, each sphere is a different alloy, right? You got some, te, some tin and some lead. Spheres, no, we've got tin lead spheres, or we've got sack spheres. And they're inside this medium. Now this medium, I talked about formulating about rheology and viscosity. There's stuff that we add to that medium, there's chemicals and things that we add that give it those properties, that give it what we call a gel structure, or thixotropic agents. Okay, so there's things we put in medium that give it those properties, as well as all the stuff to remove mm -hmm. oxides when you do soldering, uh, as well as resist moisture uptake, because it would naturally do that, so we gotta do that as well. Oh, and by the way, it's gotta be no clean, right? So you don't wanna clean it when you're done. So all the activators that do all the work to clean off all the oxides, you want them, after they do that, to not do that anymore. So then they gotta stop. So you gotta put in a mechanism to turn them off or to capture them later on. So there's a lot of stuff in this yellow blob here. We do a lot of different things. And none of them can interact in a way that's gonna cause problems. Because um, we've made those formulations that mix it all up, it looks good. On the first print and the second print, you got a brick. So not so good. So all those little ingredients go in and the magic foo-foo dust and whatever to get us a wonderful solder paste. So, and actually we'll have a, if those who are interested, we'll be having a discussion on solder particle sizes in J Standard 5 tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., which will be on the topic. Um, but most of you are probably familiar with type 3, and it's probably so prevalent, it probably just, you think that's what solder paste is. Type 3 is the mo by far the most common paste. Um, if you look at the particle sizes, most of us talk about microns. Most of them are between 25 and 45 microns. Um, and this is the mesh sizes, so um, if you think about sieves or meshes, um, those are, are the mesh sizes that we'd use. Uh, talk about in mils, between 1 and 1.8. Um, and this is, you know, 90 plus percent of the particles are in that range, okay? We're seeing more and more today people looking at type 4 powder, so it's a little bit smaller uh, because you get the finer pitch, and I'll show you when we talk about, a little bit about aperture filling. If you think about it, you got a bunch of these spheres in this paste. Those spheres have to fit through those little holes in the apertures. Well, the bigger the spheres, the bigger that aperture has to be to, for them all to fill in there and release really well. And so if the apertures get smaller, then you want your particle sizes to get smaller, okay? Which is why we go start talking about type four. And then type five and six um, are typically used in the semiconductor arena where uh, they are used on wafer printing to make the bumps. So sometimes people drop spheres to make the bumps on packages, like a CSP or a BGA. Um, some people actually print uh, little, very small amounts of solder. Uh, and once solder mets, wets and melts, it actually forms a sphere. That's how we create the spheres to begin with. You take molten solder and you drop them through a column of, of whatever proprietary design you have. But liquids naturally form a sphere in a vacuum without any, or, or just in air, without any um, other effect on them. And so that's how you get the spheres on the bottom of CSPs or BGAs. But when we're talking about particle sizes here, I don't think many folks are even using type one or type two. The few applications I've seen that still may use type two. Most folks are in the type three range. Some of you may be using type four or considering type four. Um, Mother Nature doesn't give you anything for free. So you want to go, I mean, a lot of people say, well, type four must be easier to print. I want to do type four. Why not? What, what harm can there be? Um, you know, it's harder for us to make type four, so therefore we pass it along to you as a higher price, typically. Um, and so they're harder to make. It's harder to, to, to get that cut. Uh, in addition, we're talk, always fighting oxidation. Um, and so all those solder spheres, the outside of the sphere, um, there's more surface area the smaller you go more surface area to volume ratio. And so therefore, smaller particle sizes oxidize uh, quicker per volume. Therefore, the fluxes have to be a little more aggressive to help keep them from oxidizing, yet they can't be so aggressive they cause you problems in reliability. And so there's a couple little things there you gotta worry about. So, but you can see here, so a little bit smaller particle size. So if you look at, at meshes here, um, this is the old ASTM mesh designation. Um, and so you see the larger particles go, th you know, basically get captured up top here. That's why you see the minus 35 or 325. And then the smaller particles fall through the 400 mesh onto the 500 mesh, just like that. 
it's a little more, com you know, usually you're sieving them, you're trying to move them around, you're shuffling them. Now we got these nice sphere, spherical components, want them to stay nice and smooth and shiny. That activity typically damages them. So we don't use this method very much anymore. There are other ways of, of sorting sizes that we utilize today. Uh, but traditionally, this, this would be the way. Um, so you basically drop that powder through a column. There are sieves in that column. Uh, the bigger parts, chunks stay up here, the smaller chunks go through the fines, and the rest are here in the middle. You collect those and make your paste from that, okay? So if you look at, and this is a complicated chart, and I'll talk more about this a little bit later. Um, what this is is looking at the pitch, um, the aperture sizes, and then the particle sizes of the powders that, are, that give us good prints. Um, and so what this chart really is, is showing, and these are type three, type three and a half, type four, type five, but there is some limit with, there we go. So there is some limit at which you're not gonna get good uh, print capability anymore. The particles are, are too big to fit through. Um, and so there are some red bars here where we see all of a sudden that we're getting poor print performance. And this is in a controlled laboratory environment uh, for most folks. We actually, I did have at one point in time a yellow band, which was probably good for the lab, but probably not good in high volume production. And so there are limitations. There is, driven mostly by, by powder particle size, there is some effect from the paste itself, because the medium will have some characteristics with release and things like that. And so if you're considering, do I need to move to type four, do I, or can I stay with my type three? Um, you know, one of the things you could do is, is sort of a study where you're looking at, you know, does that material go through the apertures in a, controlled manner, doing the print testing to say, do you get good deposits and consistent deposits to find out if the particle size matches what you need on the print side. So what do small particles give us? Well, they give us better print definition. Um, they are definitely, uh, really want to use them for smaller apertures. It does increase the initial tack force. It does also increase your viscosity, which is going to change your print uh, setup. Uh, there is a more of a tendency to form satellite uh, uh, balls are, and also have a shorter shelf life of the paste itself. So if you've got, um, you know, because they're smaller spheres, the surface area to volume ratio is higher, higher degree or propensity to oxidize, so you may get more satellite spheres or solder balling uh, because of that, and so it's something to, to keep an eye out for. Um, and so there's, well, once again, there's always, there's some give and take. So graphically here, the bigger spheres don't pack as well as the smaller spheres pack inside of, a, inside of an aperture. And so the better packing you get, the better release you get, the more even and nice crisp deposit that you get. Obviously if this aperture was wider and these packed really well, you wouldn't need to worry about that. Okay, so when we talk about particle size, the reason why it's important, uh, and most people think about it, well I gotta do 0402s or I gotta do 0201, so I have to use type four. Well maybe not. How thick is your stencil? What's the aperture size that you're printing? Are you printing home plate? Are you printing crowns? Are you printing, you know, there's a lot more that goes into it than just this type of component needs this, par this type of particle size. Okay, it's really dependent on your stencil. Okay, so it's not the component, it's really how big is your stencil? What are the aperture sizes? Uh, and I'm sure you guys, are you guys having a stencil talk, someone talking about stencils later, like aperture sizes and aperture ratio and all that stuff? So I'm sure you'll see that. Um, Let's get into the ratio of the, the walls versus the volume here. That comes into play, and so you'll see. So insufficient solder can be related to, to fine, you know, to particle size. So here's an aperture. You can see, in the, and you never get, you know, people always talk about 100% release. You're always going to get stuff um, in the apertures. It'll stick a little bit. Um, and so with a fine particle size, you see pretty good release. A few particles here and there. This is an SEM uh, of a heart. Um, but if you do a larger powder size, you can see what happens. The larger particle sizes here, they get more caught up and you don't get a good release. So all this paste you expected to be on your circuit board is now stuck up in your stencil. And then the next print, you're going to get even more stuff gummed up in there because solder paste is going to want to stick to itself a little bit. So eventually you're going to get that clogged aperture, which is going to be, if you didn't detect this as a insufficient, it might it might get down the line a little bit where you kind of got a solder joint, but maybe not so good. And then maybe you get that phone call after the park is out in the field. Then maybe somebody gets yelled at to look at the print process again. Just maybe, just saying. 
Um, but the next time around, eventually you're going to get to the point where you have completely blocked aperture and then you get no paste at all, which definitely should have raised some uh, alarms, hopefully somewhere in the process uh, guideline or process monitoring. So here's the deposits there. You can see the little spheres and happy flux. And there you can see insufficiency. You see the exposed pad. You can see the inconsistent deposits. And so this is where the relationship between the particle size and the deposits go. So um, that gets all into that print definition, right? You want a nice brick of paste. Um, so you want good release from the apertures. You want the particle size to match that aperture dimensions. Uh, another thing that can happen, we talked about, um, you know, paste being worked and the, the shear thinning and the hysteresis. So as you, if a paste isn't, isn't designed very well or it's being used in an environment it's not designed for or that hysteresis curve is, is falling down pretty quickly, you could get slump, um, you know, where the material instead of this nice brick deposit, well-defined edges, you start to see a slumpy, goopy mess. Um, you know, and so this slump, not so bad here, these things are pretty far apart. Uh, I think this is like a 20 or 30 mil pitch. You know, where pitches are getting a lot smaller when they slump, leads to bridging and other issues. Um, peaking is another thing we can get dog ears. Uh, if you get that paste catching in the aperture, it doesn't release well, you get sort of a dog ear effect or a peak uh, sort of thing. Um, so that's not necessarily a good thing. You don't like that because that's paste that should have been there is now sticking up over here, and that can cause issues. That, that could fall over and lead to a bridge. It can leave you with an insufficient here on the toe or the heel, depending on which direction that's put the insufficient.